David Troy, and this is the David Troy Self. <laughs> Okay, so let's just jump right into the haircut today. Now this is Charlie. If you don't recognize Charlie, she's on one of my previous videos where we did some color. I'm going to put a link to her story below. She is doing a mission trip and is going overseas, so she is going to be traveling a lot. So we're going to keep a lot of length to Charlie's hair so she can still tie it back while she's traveling. Now remember, I'm going to put a link to her story just below. I'd love you to go check it out, look at her blog and support this girl. She is amazing. So do me a favor, go and pick up one of Charlie's t-shirts. Let's get behind her and support her. She's a great person and I really want to help her raise the money to get her overseas. She's halfway there, she's got a long way to go, but I know she's going to make it. So as I work my way up through the occipital bone into the crown area, you can see Charlie's head is slightly tilted forward. That's just to make sure everything's straight. You can see I'm pulling it down and I'm cutting palm to palm. So I'm slightly bending it because her head is slightly tilted, I know we're going to end up with a nice clean line down the bottom. So I do talk about this a lot in a lot of my videos, but the way we cut hair is actually on the back stroke. So when I'm closing the blade, I'm actually dragging it back, so I'm not pushing the hair forward. So it's very important to always keep the client in the right position, because we don't want any undergraduation here. So as I work up into the crown area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start connecting that top part to the rest of the hair. <laughs> So now we get to the top part where the layering starts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull Charlie's head up straight, but because we're working on the curve of the head, I'm actually pulling it out at 90 degrees. I know it looks like 45, but because it's on the curve of the head shape, I'm pulling it directly out and I'm letting the hair drop out the bottom because I want to keep some of that weight down there. So you may have noticed I haven't touched the sides in front of the ear yet. I'm working directly all behind the ear. I haven't gone into the sides yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my guideline down the very bottom. So again, we're going to keep a lot of the weight down there, but I'm just going to take that corner off just to make sure it's all connected. Now by doing this, because there's less hair in the front, it allows me to keep a bit of a strong line. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side before we even start the top of the haircut. <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop those top sections out and we're going to connect the front to the back of the haircut. Now the way I do this, I always stand behind the client and I find my guideline and I'm pulling it directly up and just connecting that bottom last layer to the top layer just to make sure it all flows and connects together. Okay, so moving on to the face frame. Look, everyone does this different. Everyone has their own style of doing it. Now, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. This is just the way I do it. So what I typically do is I take about an inch right off the front and I determine the shortest point. So by asking Charlie where you want it to fall, what I'm doing is determining where it's going to fall around the start of the face frame, knowing it's going to pop up just a little bit. So we can go back in once this is dry, we can always take it shorter. So what I'm going to do is twist it around to create that nice curve. So really what this is doing is creating a guideline for me, creating a starting point. So where the face frame is going to be the shortest point. So I'm going to take it a little bit shorter. You can see here by twisting it, it creates that nice concave curve around the shape of the face. So if you haven't done this before, you know, practice it on a mannequin before you actually do it on a client and you'll see what I mean. So once I've got that short point, I find out where it's at and that's my starting point. That's the start of my guideline. And then I'm pulling it out, dragging my fingers out at 45 degrees, creating that nice little face frame. Now when it's wet, you can be a little bit safe, leave it a little bit longer because we know once it's dry, we can go back in and personalize everything. 
Okay, so what I do, once I've got that guideline, I actually pull everything forward up until behind the ear to make sure everything connects. Now, not everyone does it this way, and if it's done wrong, you can leave holes in haircuts, which is not what you want to do. So, what I do is just make sure when she's pulling it forward that it's all connected and it's got that nice little movement in there. So as I work onto the other side, you may see it a little bit better here. I actually cut the outline different to the rest of the haircut. You can see here, I'm closing the scissor halfway, but pushing it forward instead of cutting on the back stroke. Now I'm cutting on the forward stroke because I want to push that hair in the frontward direction. But you can see here, working all the way back to behind the ear, making sure everything connects. So when we dry it, you've got that movement and flow. So there you go, and after drying it, look, I love the way this turned out. I'm so happy with the end result. I'm happy with the layers and the movement and even the color, which you can check out on my previous video. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, but I'll catch you next week.